Hi, today at the Photographer Academy studio, we're going to be looking at hair lights. Hair lights tend to confuse some people about how much exposure to put on them and how little exposure to put on them. It's one of those blank areas that people don't know enough about. Let's have a look really with a, a one light setup to show Kelsey with her dark hair and her dark jacket against the very, very dark background. Everything is going to mold into one and look very two dimensional. By adding a hair light, we can either use the old fashioned type snoot, which is basically just a conical shaped reflector that's going to angle the light and put it exactly where we want it to go. I prefer using uh, an 18 centimeter reflector with a honeycomb grid inside to A, to give me a wider spread of light so I can light not just the top of the head, but all the way down the back of the head and sometimes across the shoulder. But the snoot will start off with just to show exactly what it's designed to do. It's a nice cheap accessory to add to anybody's kit. I'm gonna take an image first, just with the main light so we can see Kelsey mold into the background and then we'll add the snoot on to make a difference and then we'll go on to the reflector with a very tightly controlled grid on the front. So let's now take the first shot. I've already metered up at 1 25th of a second and it's f4.5. So standard 45 degree lighting pattern just to show this. So let me take a picture of Kelsey now. That's lovely. Okay. So immediately what we can see is that her face is perfectly exposed, but her hair and everything just goes into the background. There's no detail there at all. So what I'd like to do is kind of lift this image by adding a sparkle of light to the top of her hair. Now be very careful when you're using hair lights. If you have a blonde haired person, a uh, very fair haired person, we have to control the exposure really, really carefully because we can actually blow their hair out. Kelsey's hair is very dark and therefore is going to take quite a lot of light. So my backlight now is actually two stops brighter than my main light because her hair's dark and it's just going to eat as much light as we can throw at it. So you've seen the original image. Let's now do this one and see the difference immediately. Lovely, thank you. So we've now got a highlight on her glossy dark hair, which has brought her out from the background and made her more into a three-dimensional subject. What we can now do is look at the control of this light. So a snoot is going to give me a very narrow beam of light, but sometimes it's not contaminating my main lighting panel on the front, but I'm just going to tweak it very slightly just to bring it back off the front of her hair towards the back and it's only a minor adjustment of a couple of inches but let's reshoot that and you'll see the highlight move backwards on the back of her hair just a little bit lovely thanks Kels so now we've we've controlled the light a little bit further just to stop the light coming in and contaminating anything if it was in the first place on the front uh, angle of her head is very slightly different, but you can see the idea. So now we've got separation and detail in the hair that we didn't have before. So now what I'm gonna do is drop my stand down and put my 18 centimeter reflector with a grid on, and then we'll have a different pool of light to work with. Be very careful when removing a snoot because it's metal. If you've got a halogen modeling lamp, it will get hot. Lock it into place and get my height back up. So sometimes it's quite nice to turn your modeling lamp uh, up high so you can see exactly where the hair light is going. And also sometimes turn your main light off so you can see exactly what is actually going on. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just gonna aim it at the back of her head. My exposure won't have changed even though I've changed the modifier, but we should get a slightly more controlled look. Just come forward half a step. That's lovely there, that's perfect. Okay. Same shot as last time, so we can compare them all together. Lovely. I think it's a nicer quality of light. It may not be visible on, the, on a screen necessarily, but you can see the difference that this is actually going to make. Don't forget, this has got a tightly controlled pool of light caused by the grid on the front. So now we've got a much more subtle look. Also, you'll notice the background is now a little bit lighter because the light is spilling over onto the background itself just by a, a, a few tenths of a stop. But we can control that by bringing the light round 
off the background. And if we get Kelsey to stand forward one step, we can separate her even more. I can bring this in a little tiny bit closer and we can stop the light spill onto the background so we can keep the depth to the black if that's what we want to do. So let's do that one again. Lovely. There we go. It's a little bit more shiny. And what I've done is I've brought the light forward slightly just to highlight the side of her cheek and we can see the result on the screen. There you go, it's lifted the image up just by a minor adjustment of a couple of inches. There's not a lot more in there than that, but look at the detail we've now got in our hair. I quite like that. So let's now take the, the grid off just to show how much control we have with it. So if I pull the grid out of the front, we'll have a wider spread of light. And I'll get it up high. So this now, I'm going to have to be careful that it doesn't go onto her face too much. But what is going to happen is going to hit the background. So my background's going to become lighter, but I don't think that's a problem because it should lift the whole image. That's lovely. Excellent. OK, so we've got a completely different look and feel because we have an uncontrolled light source coming from behind. Now, there is a really easy way of making this back to controlled, and that's by moving everything forward. So now you can see we have a white or a brighter part of our background where the light is hitting it, and it gives a much hotter appearance to the image. It's a little bit much. The grid was cutting down the exposure on the separation light, so we can control that a little bit with the aperture. But let's just bring everything forward very slightly so that I have some separation between my background and my subject. So if you can come a couple of steps forward for me. That's it. We keep the same distance, so the exposure's not going to change too much. Now it gives me the space to turn my backlight facing the camera and now I'm going to retain my black background, but at the same time, putting my hair light in, right, in the right place. So I'm not going to change any exposure on the camera because everything should be the same distance, but let's give this a go. Oh, take the cable away from the front. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Right, I'm going to turn the power down on that rear light just by a little bit. And it's sat in a different group, so two seconds. We can bring this down. And if I come down by half a stop, come back up to position, take this shot again would then have reduced the exposure on the side of her hair because at the moment it's just slightly too hot where we haven't got that tightly controlled pool of light. There we go. And then the detail comes back and we've, we've adjusted it very, very simply in camera without having to mess about afterwards. So there you go. Adding a headlight, hair light in with a control pool of light on a grid, a snoot, and then a wide open bare reflector. I hope you found this video informative. For any more information on the equipment used, please visit ellencrom.com, fotix.com, or your local dealer.